about Embrace, or in other words, how you can use F# -sharp to perform large-scale cloud computation. So to give you a few words about us, uh, we are a small company, software company, and consultancy based in Athens, Greece. We specialize in the .NET framework, and in particular F# -sharp. Uh, we mostly do business applications, but we also have a research and development division that mostly does open source development and Embrace is one of those open source efforts. So to give you an, a definition of what Embrace is, I probably have to give you two definitions. The first one is that it is a programming model for defining large-scale distributed computation and this has been inspired by F Sharp's asynchronous workflows, uh, which is a, again a programming model that allows you to <coughs> define asynchronous com computation in a seemingly sequential way. And of course it is a declarative programming model. And secondly it's also a cluster infrastructure that we have developed. It's based on the .NET framework and uh, it gives various kinds of guarantees for distributed execution and it's open source so you can check it out on GitHub. And in this talk, I'll mostly focus on the former aspect of Embrace, give a discussion of the programming model. And this is the most basic type of uh, cloud computation you can define. This is basically a uh, computation that performs a side effect and then returns uh, an integer. Uh, as you can see, uh, it uses this, it is delimited by this cloud brace brace syntax, which is essentially uh, an F-sharp computation expression. You can sort of think of that as, as Haskell's do notation, essentially. And this constructs uh, a value with, which has type cloud of int, which means that this once executed will return a result of type int. And of course it's also important to state that this does not represent a cloud computation, it's just a workflow which has to be executed in the context of a runtime. And this is what is being done in the final line in the demo here. Um, so of course, I can also compose uh, cloud workflows. And in this example, I define a couple of trivial workflows at the beginning of my code. And then I, 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 I compose this uh, on a bigger uh, cloud workflow, like so. Um, uh, the let bang keyboard uh, is essentially a uh, let binding overload, uh, if you're familiar with Haskell, you can sort of think of it as the right arrow, uh, left arrow assignment. So I guess you probably see that this is some sort of a monad. Uh, so to give a more uh, involved example, I give a definition of foldem, which is your standard foldem definition that is defined for the context of cloud workflows. Uh, the the implementation is pretty standard. Uh, perhaps some of you are not familiar with its return bank keyword. It's essentially F Sharp's way of composing tail calls uh, within the monadic context. Um, but the code we've seen so far is essentially sequential. It doesn't really have any aspect of distribution. And in order to achieve distribution, we use uh, uh, primitive combinators that are provided by the programming model that are actually used for this. So I have a variation of the previous original slide that I, again has two smaller computations, but rather than sequentially binding on each of them, then I pass them to this mysterious combinator and this returns a pair of results. When executed, this has the effect of uh, performing uh, distributed uh, fork turn parallelism on the computations. And uh, when I mean distributed, this is a really explicit way of uh, uh, of materializing distribution, this will, in the cluster context, this will essentially generate a unique task for each of the uh, 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 child computations. So it's really explicit about the granularity. But uh, it's also really ambiguous in terms of where this might be executed. This is actually a decision that is made by the scheduler of the cluster. Uh, a variation of the previous binary parallel combinator is the variadic cloud parallel primitive, 
if you've seen f sharp's uh, async, this might seem familiar because there is also an async.parallel primitive in, uh, in f sharp. This essentially takes an array of arbitrarily many cloud workflows and combines them into one, which has again distrib distributive parallelism semantics. So in this particularly trivial example, I basically just create an array of 100 jobs that perform something trivial, pass it to the cloud parallel combinator here, and this will actually cause the cluster to spawn 100 tasks uh, for execution. And once this is finished, I bind the results and continue with some further computation. Another feature that the programming model has is exception handling. And this is achievable through a feature of f -sharp's computation expressions in which we can actually define semantics for language integrated exception handling within uh, computation expressions. And this example again, I have a parallel workflow which is, uh, which is uh, delimited by a try with clause and I can actually uh, catch exceptions that might be thrown by one of the uh, child computations. In particular, in this case, I might get a divide by zero exception. Uh, because this is a distributed computation, this essentially means that the exception might be raised in a completely different machine than the one in which it was handled. Um, and uh, also this, uh, uh, this is a really strong feature, I think, because it, it, actually, it, it actually adds a dynamic to the computation. So, for instance, one could, could use this to implement non-deterministic parallelism uh, in uh, computation. Um, so, yeah, I guess I'll just move on with a short demo. So this is Visual Studio. On the left is a simple f -sharp script, on the right is f -sharp Interactive. It's the interpreter for f -sharp that is shipped with Visual Studio. And uh, for this demo, since uh, I don't really trust uh, conference Wi-Fi connections, I'm not really going to use the cloud for performing computation. So I'm just going to spawn a, few, a local cluster that will be running on this laptop. Unfortunately, you have some windows that represent worker nodes running on the machine. I have some more, but I should take some time to, to drag them. But I guess they should convince you that I have a local cluster running on this laptop. And once the cluster has booted, I get back a, an Embrace runtime object, which I can essentially use to perform cloud computation. So for inst instance, I could get some printed information on the, on the runtime itself. Uh, I could do some other things, but maybe not now. Um, and to basically just perform a demo of a cloud computation, I, I, I basically just need to evaluate the example that you saw previously on the slides, and I have my example. So if I run this by calling this method, um, you see some stuff being done on the cluster, and eventually I'm going to get an exception. Because, of course, in one of the child computations, uh, a divide by zero exception was raised, and this was essentially. Uh, caught, uh, not caught by my workflow, so I got it back in the client. So in order to fix this, I can use a try with, as in the previous example. And of course, if I do this again, call example prime, get some work done in the cluster, I'll get none, as expected. So going back to the slides, would like to give a excuse me a minute. Going back to the slides, I'd like to give a, a more <coughs> serious example of parallelism. And this would be an implementation of parallel fold, unlike the previous fold implementation which, which was sequential. And in this case, a folding function is not really enough. I also need a combiner function. 
appended to the inputs to make essentially S the output type a monoid. And uh, within this cloud workflow, I define a smaller workflow which performs sequential fold on the inputs given the input functions. And a curious function is being called here. It's called cloud.getWorkerCount, which is monadic. And this is, again, another primitive that we provide, which, once executed, will give back the, the current number of available worker nodes in the cluster. So I can actually use this number while executing to partition my inputs into smaller chunks, which I can then pass into sequential fold. And again, once I have created these more smaller jobs, I can pipe them into cloud.parallel, which will execute those smaller sequential folds in parallel. And once I get back my results, I can sequentially reduce the significantly smaller results uh, that uh, I happen to get back. Um, I guess uh, it's, it's easy to see that you can actually implement map, a, a map reduce in terms of this parallel fold. And uh, also, this can be actually left as an exercise to actually augment this sequential fold so, so as to uh, utilize the multi-core capacity of each of the worker nodes that are being used. Um, moving on, so so far we've talked about uh, distributed uh, uh, distributing computation, but I haven't really talked about big data. And I suppose you agree with me that uh, processing big data through closures is not really something that is scalable. So we need some sort of primitive to interface with the cloud storage services that are being provided. And uh, we do this in the programming model by using references to data entities, which conceptually are similar to reference cells found in ML-like languages. But uh, they are, first of all, they're immutable, so you can only create them. You can't really update them or remove them in most cases. Uh, and creation is only admissible through the monad because uh, defining a new data entity in the cloud storage uh, entails a scheduling decision. And we offer support for uh, pluggable storage interfaces, and we currently offer support for SQL and the Windows Azure Blob Storage. Um, and to give you a brief example of the API, though I'm not going to spend too much time on this, I'm going to show you a cloud ref, which is uh, uh, directly analogous to the ref cell, and its API basically boil, boils down to these two functions to allocate a new cloud ref just pass the data and this will monadically create a new cloud ref of type T which is a lightweight, lightweight reference to this value and again to the reference you have this read function. Um, a similar uh, primitive is the cloud file which is an untyped unstructured version of a data entity and it is essentially represents a file in the cloud storage API uh, the new and read functions are somewhat similar to the cloud ref, but they sort of represent a serialization, deserialization uh, API. Uh, and finally, I chose to mention the enumerate function, which takes a path to uh, a cloud storage folder, which could be, for instance, a, uh, a container ID to Windows Azure. And this returns all the cloud all the files in that container manifested as cloud files. And I'm going to give you another demo of this. So, moving on to a different file. Again, I have a variation of the previously mentioned parallel fold implementation, which I'm going to evaluate in the interpreter. And for this example, I'm going to implement uh, distributed, distributed word count, which is a standard example when uh, demoing MapReduce, I guess. So in this particular example, I'm going to define a word count type, which is essentially uh, 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 word times frequency array type. Um, the identity element, of course, in this context, is the empty frequency array. There is the reduce function, which is going to expand this so you can see in its entirety. It, it takes two word counts, 
and performs a link style uh, query and uh, uh, re returns the combined word count based on the two inputs. I'm going to evaluate this as well. Uh, and moving on, I'm going to define my folding function. And I need a value here which defines a few words that I'm going to ignore in my word count, as you can see. And finally, the compute function takes an accumulated word count. It takes a cloud file, which is, the, uh, uh, which is a reference to a file in the cloud storage uh, system, as I mentioned earlier. And this will return an updated word count. This will essentially read the content, contents of the cloud file monadically. And once I get back the text, I can again perform some computation to compute its word count and then reduce it with the accumulated word count. So I can also evaluate this. And I can now execute this. So, so as you might expect, I'm using Shakespeare as my data set, which I have stored locally. These are the files. I already have a runtime, so I don't need to, to run this. Uh, so now I need to upload my files to the, to the cloud storage, but since this is a local runtime, this will happen really fast, as you can see. So I type runtime.upload files, and I give him its paths. And this, as you would expect, happened all, almost instant, instantaneously. This is a GUI descriptor of each of the cloud files. So now I can continue with performing my computation. So I can just define a new cloud process and, well, define, shape my computation. So I call with parallel fold my compute function, my reduce function, the identity element, which is the, the empty word frequency, and my data set, which is the cloud files. So I just evaluate this and if I could show you there is some work being done here and I guess it also has completed. Notice that in this particular example I have gotten back a process object which basically just returns some information on the performed computation as to <coughs> when it started, how long it took, and of course the result, which happened to be successful, and it is this. Uh, but of course you can also just fetch it locally and continue further. Uh, finally, I'll just show you this too, and get a rundown of all the processes that have been run in the lifetime of this cluster. Uh, and uh, this concludes the demo. So without further ado, I will move on with some performance metrics which we did last year <coughs> for PLOS. And uh, our benchmarks, we tested Embrace against Hadoop. Uh, both of the frameworks were staged on Windows Azure and we used uh, various, uh, various sizes of large Azure instances for those that are not familiar a large Azure instance is essentially a quad-core VM. And we tested two algorithms, grep and k-means. And of course, you can also find the source code of these performed tests, both for Embrace and Hadoop, available on GitHub. Um, so in the first test, uh, we, ran, we, we ran distributed grep, which is a pretty straightforward MapReduce implementation. Uh, and we used a varying size of input data as our data set. We got these results. Uh, also, I should note that uh, as the worker core uh, count rises, also the <coughs> data set count rises. So it is to be expected that the, the, the line is essentially constant. And this is basically ju just a way of seeing how the cluster scales. And uh, in this result, we are pretty comparable to Hadoop, I'd say. But moving on to k-means, which is not your standard MapReduce uh, algorithm, uh, we again ran Embrace against 
Apache Mahout, which is a, a, a library that implements such types of algorithms over MapReduce. And in these results, we were significantly faster, about an order of magnitude faster. So uh, I guess this is, uh, uh, this is a, a testament to the power, I guess, of the programming model uh, offered. And to conclude, uh, we have a declarative composable uh, programming model that can be performed through the Cloud Monad. We have explicit and dynamic control over parallelism patterns and granularity of the computation. We have exception handling. And as seen in the demos, we have on-the-fly deployment of computation through, through the f REPL. And finally, we are open source. We do invite you to check our source code and, of course, contribute. And that's it. Thank you. Have you done any comparison with Spark? No, we haven't. <laughs> Do you have any plans to? Sorry? Do you have any plans to? Uh, we definitely have, but uh, uh, we're still, I mean, we're still in an early de development stage, I'd say. So I guess, I, I, I guess uh, to, uh, this is not really an answer to your question, but we have received requests of uh, uh, porting the programming model to run over Mesos. So this is probably one of the directions that uh, uh, we are facing. Thank you. That was a nice ICFP talk, but this is CUFP. <laughs> What's the commercial connection of this? Are you doing this for time to market? Are you doing it so you get fewer lines of code and, and hence greater reliability? Uh, Why does Nessos care about this? Uh, we definitely care for the commercial, commercial aspect of this, but uh, I guess we're still having a hard time trying to convince people of its usefulness, I'd say. Uh, I don't know if this answers your question. Uh, well, is it just you? Is it a group of people in that? It's, it's a company. We're trying to make money from this. And, and what's your business model? Uh, I guess, I, I, I'm not the business person, so you can talk to our product manager who is here after the talk. Uh, he can give more details on this. Okay, thank you. I just had a question if you had attempt. I'm sorry. I just had a question if you had attempted to uh, execute any sort of larger compute cores than just the sort of simple kind of grep. And uh, like a more uh, a, a, a more complex like map reduce. Exactly. Uh, we have a few benchmarks, but that, that was the one that we submitted last year. Uh, okay. Distributed because I think it's the standard benchmark. All right. Well, um, I think that's all we have. Um, so, all right. One more. How do you ship code from node to node? How do I ship code? Oh, this is we serialize closures. Uh, so I didn't mention this, but the. Uh, uh, so, so the monadic skeleton of the code is interpreted using so so essentially a cloud uh, uh, the cloud monad is the free monad okay uh, and this is essentially serialized to the uh, this is actually serialized to the cluster and it is executed using a, a trampoline evaluation and it's basically through serialization of closures but the, I guess you are talking how this happens in terms of the interpreter is that right okay. So this is another open source project that is part of our work, and uh, uh, it uh, it, uh, it sort of uh, has to do with how a dynamic a dynamic assembly in .NET can be actually materialized as an assembly. And uh, we use technologies like uh, Mono.Sessel, if you're familiar with that, to actually persist a dynamic assembly that is being used by interpreters like F# Interactive. And this can actually be transmitted to uh, remote processes. Uh, if, you, if you go to Embrace and check out our GitHub page, you'll find a project that's called Vagrant, and it has a basic description of uh, how this is being done. <coughs>